I'd like to talk a little bit about VMware Workstation and VMware Fusion. I picked up some new uh, PC hardware and I put Windows 10 on it to test out some OpenVPN client stuff and I figured that I could take advantage of it uh, when it's running to host some VMs. Um, so I put VMware Workstation Pro on there um, and it's got a feature called shared VMs that I wasn't familiar with until recently but it's pretty cool. So I've created a CentOS 7 uh, virtual machine that will be my clone source. I'm going to use it for spinning up new VMs to test stuff out like Ansible provisioning and, and whatnot. Um, I, after it was created I went in and deleted things like the CD-ROM and the sound card, the stuff I'm not gonna need. And um, originally I went in here and clicked manage share so that I could share it and start it up. What sharing means is that it's going to take it from being a normal desktop interacting VM and move it into running by the host OS uh, as a service. That's going to cut off things like um, drag and drop and folder sharing and some of the um, what do they call it? Unity, I think it is, where you've got windows that appear as a part of part of the uh, amongst the rest of the the windows on the desktop. Um, that stuff is all disabled and shared. But what you do get with shared VMs is the ability to uh, run them at start. So we'll see in a little bit that we can turn on auto start, and so they'll be started up uh, when the PC boots. I should also mention that on this uh, master VM, I uh, added the packages that I know I'm going to need for sure, and I added my uh, SSH key to the authorized key file. So now anytime that this or a copy of it is started up, I can authenticate and get in there and start doing work. So initially I thought I would just right click on this thing, go to manage and do share uh, and then I'd be set. I could uh, start it up and make copies of it. Well once something becomes a shared VM you can't export or clone it anymore. And that's an important consideration. I, I didn't realize that uh, initially. Uh, so something to think about when you're planning. However, when it is just an ordinary VM, um, it's really easy to uh, create clones of it and there's even kind of a shortcut. So um, one way to make a clone of this would be to go manage and clone and that would make a, a copy of the VM and it would be suitable for starting up or moving that new copy um, into or con con convert it into being a, a shared VM. Uh, that's that'll work just fine however there's kind of a shortcut so if you go manage share you get the option on the next step to either move it or make a clone so this saves a step let's say I'm making a new uh, uh, run deck server All right, that is all done, and uh, now I could power this thing up and uh, log into it using the SSH key I created for that purpose and uh, start work. Uh, that works. That works just fine. It is worth mentioning, though. Um, I don't know if anybody else cares, but when you do a clone, either in what I just showed or doing manage clone this way. Uh, in both cases you'll end up with a new VM where the files beneath the uh, name that was provided are going to be the same as the, the uh, VM they were cloned from. 
if that's important to you, um, you may want to do an export import. So uh, just as, as part of testing this uh, out, I did um, file export to OVF. And uh, again, you can't do that with a shared VM that disappears from the menu. Uh, so I have already done an export to OVF and uh, I believe it is here. Uh, and in this situation, uh, here's where I placed the export. So here's the file that will be used to import. Um, the names right now are what the clone was using, but upon importing um, when the name of the VM is, is provided, it will replace the file names. Again, probably nobody else but me cares about that sort of thing. Uh, it's worth noting, though, that you have to, if you're moving this around, you want to grab all three. Uh, you, if you're missing one, it's not going to work. And I don't know why. Maybe it is my default export settings, but upon doing uh, an import of this thing, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, import it. Uh, I probably wouldn't ordinarily put my virtual machines in the default location. It's going to put it in my user directory. Uh, I would want them somewhere closer to root so that it's easy to exclude all of them from my uh, backup selection. I don't want to nightly create backups of entire multi-gig files. Anyway, so if I do the import, it's going to show this uh, message, and it just means that the current version of Workstation uh, is having difficulty processing the metadata that exists in my import file. Clicking retry makes it work just fine. Um, the only downside I, I've seen really is that as soon as this is done, uh, when the new uh, VM shows up here, uh, and I'll just wait for this to finish so I can carry on. So it's, it's all done importing here. Here's the new uh, machine, and you can see that the, the files um, down here got renamed. And I can just make this uh, compatible with the current version. Uh, I have found, interestingly, that the only thing that needs to be done in order to convert this is to add some <laughs> uh, BES and BIOS thing. I don't know what significance that has, but it's super easy to convert it, and now it is with the same compatibility level as my uh, VMware Workstation version. So now if I wanted to, I could convert this to a shared VM. And in this situation, I don't want to create a clone. I want to move it. So I'll leave the default here. And again, I probably wouldn't, uh, I'm probably not going to settle on this location as being the path for my VMs. This is different because they're shared. This is not the same location as I just showed uh, for the ordinary VMs. But uh, it's pretty quick to move it from being um, ordinary. I'm not sure what the regular things are called. Ordinary to shared. Uh, so now it's running. I could fire it up, and it would be available on the network. Uh, I would probably go into adapter settings and, um, well, it hasn't been run yet. As soon as it's run once, a, a new Mac will be generated. I'd grab that take a look at my DHCP server and see what IP that is on now and uh, connect to it and everything would be ready to go. I'm kind of spoiled at my jobby job. We have Stratoscale and I can do a lot of host configuration uh, to bypass a lot of these steps. So now I want to show connecting to VMware Workstation server from 
my VMware application here on my ordinary workstation. And that is um, going to require the first that I change the firewall to allow it in. So here's the rule that needs to get modified. Um, I'm not super familiar with uh, Windows firewalling. Uh, the way to make this work is to just allow for the public profile. Uh, that's going to make it work just fine. Probably what I will do later is just create another rule that allows access to the service on TCP 443 um, and have that limited from not users yeah so I would create just just a subnet for the things uh, for my machines that would probably be better so that if I take this to Starbucks it, it doesn't have 443 available to everybody else it's not a perfect solution but um, that's what is necessary to get it to work so if you go to connect to server here and I've got it in recent um, having made that change to the Windows firewall should allow this to connect. So now I'm connected to that service over here on Windows and I could select one of the VMs that are that live in that shared hierarchy here and I could choose to start one up or shut one down or whatever I want. There is an issue that I haven't spent enough time on yet to, to resolve. If I power this up, it's going to want to show the uh, frame buffer output. Uh, and that doesn't work. Um, probably there's another port that I need to allow access to the Windows uh, host. Um, I could probably figure that out. But it's really not too big a deal. As soon as this beach ball stops spinning, I'm just going to close this because I don't care about uh, viewing the uh, virtual console of the VM. I, I only really care about accessing it through the network. So this is the message I get. I, I think it is not entirely accurate. Uh, so I'll just dismiss that and it remains running and everything's cool. So what I would want to do next is to select the I guess I'll open it up here. So go to settings, go to network adapter, advanced. So now I can see what was generated uh, for this NIC. And uh, I'll copy or leave this open, take a glance at my DHCP server and see what IP I could expect to find this new VM at. So I just looked at the DHCP leases and I see that it is at dot 41. And there we go, I'm in. I could start uh, my Ansible provisioning, which would set the host name and take care of putting the machine into the state that I want. Um, I should mention that in this location for ordinary default VMware Fusion installation, there is a binary called VM run, and that Oh, what? All right. So um, that can be used to connect to the VMware Workstation server and do things like start, stop, whatever, VMs. Um, I suspect I'd have better luck using the VM run tool. I haven't spent enough time to, to look into it yet, but uh, that would prevent the issue with this popping up a view of the uh, console over the network. I don't care to see that. 
So lastly, what I want to do, let's say I'm happy with having these two shared VMs uh, running. I could go to this screen here, click on Manage Auto Start, and just turn them both on. I, they boot pretty quick. I probably want to reduce the amount of time that is uh, given to waiting between starts. Maybe I'd move that down in a minute. That seems reasonable. Uh, so next time I boot the host, those two should be ready for me. I think that is about it for today. Hopefully that was helpful and you learned something.